Today is an Evo 8 type of day, but before that, I need to figure out where all of our boosts went on the Type R. I took a look at it for a little bit yesterday, but I need to actually get it sorted today. So I'll update you here in a minute when I get it figured out. And then we can work on the beloved Evo 8. Alrighty friends, I'm confident the issue is fixed. So on pump gas, we should be sitting right around 20 pounds of boost. alternator on the car it's actually physically bigger than the OEM one was or OEM style and the nipple on the intake manifold was in the way and that nipple happened to go to the BOV so I took it off but a plug in the manifold so I could put the alternator on completely spaced running a line back to the BOV so it was just blowing the BOV open as soon as it hit eight pounds the BOV Spring pressure must be eight pounds. It opened the BOV with no, with no pressure in there to hold it. Blow it open, and there goes all of our boost. As you guys just saw, she's built boost just fine now. We should be good to go, and that's exciting. Let's do one more pull for the boys, and then I need to get back to work or get to work on the Evo 8. It's always something easy, man. You just gotta, you just gotta not do dumb things. Sounds like she should. First off, this car doesn't run. Now it ran just fine a couple weeks ago. It wants to start, but she ain't giving it to me. Let's try again. Come on, girl, just fire me up. Okay, better. There we go. I don't know what that was all about. That was very odd. Granted, this thing's not tuned yet. Just got a base map on her. But that was a little bit worrisome. The last few days I've been trying to start it to move it out of the shop to mess around on the Type R and she wasn't starting. But now, we're good to go. Let's let her warm up for a second. Now I have decided to go with a Haltech. I was gonna do an Elite 1500 on this car, but I actually have a few 2500s laying around the shop on other builds and whatnot. And I'm just gonna throw a Elite 2500 in here. So I'm just waiting on the plug and play adapter. You can get the Elite 2500, it's a, the Haltech. I think it's Haltech, not Haltech. Get that in here. But in the meantime, I need to kind of backtrack on the build a little bit and fix a few little things. Fix some paintwork, fix some door lock issues. Just realistically get this interior complete. This driver's side door, as you can see, is completely bare and I was waiting on a, window switch, a master window switch for that so we could roll the window up to get the wiring in. Things of that nature. Okay, let's see if she'll fire easily. I don't know. Should be good to go. So first up, and I wish I knew this earlier, could have saved me a bunch of time, but none of the door locks or the trunk lock match the ignition. I can have either the ignition rekeyed to match the doors or have the doors 
rekeyed to match the ignition. Now it is a factory OEM Mitsubishi key that I have for the car and I'm really, really fond of this. So I'm actually gonna be having all the doors and the trunk rekeyed to match the factory ignition. So with that being said, I do need to go ahead and pull out the door locks. Now with the door locks off, I need to fix some paint on these door handles as well. I'll show you guys why here in a second. I removed all of the door handles and the, remo the reason for removing all four instead of just the fronts to access the locks is if you take a look here at the very end, hmm, that might be hard to see. If you take a look at the very end of the door handle, to put it in the car so you can see better, but there's not enough base coat right here. There's not enough yellow. There's not enough paint right there right on the very end. And unfortunately, it is like that on every single door handle, which sucks, but not a big deal. So we're gonna have to repaint all the door handles. I can do that here, I don't need a booth. Not only that, the end of this mirror cap, same concept. The rest of the car is so freaking nice and it's such a minor issue, but it, it stands out and I don't like it. So I'm gonna be fixing all the door handles in the mirror cap. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these door locks re-keyed to match the factory OEM key. Type R is running good, so let's take that. You haven't truly heard it, have you? Let's get these door handles all fixed up. Oh, and by the way, first, first car meet of the year is this Saturday, 5.30 p.m. at the coffee stand at Boosted Coffee Co. I'll throw the address on the screen. I'm gonna have the Type R there, of course, and if we can get the Haltech in this car, and I guess we don't need the Haltech in now that it runs, Yellow Evo might make an appearance. It's just not very, like it needs a cut and buff, like an, and a polish before I want to actually display the car. Cause a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, I'm not a professional painter. It's got some orange peel and some runs, but I, I might still bring it out. We'll see. Now factory on this pivot point right up here, it's a rivet, but thankfully, of course, we've already had these apart. So I have a bolt and a, it's like a nylon lock washer on there. Seems to work well. M5 by 0.8 thread. No need to bust out the sandpaper. Quick little scuff to knock down the shine with some scotch Bright, And these things are ready for some new paint. Some fresh paint. Yellow is so hard, man. I don't know if I ever told you guys, but we had to put like seven coats of base on here because yellow is so transparent. Apparently there's some, I don't know if it was like ironing or I don't know what it was. Something weird that they had to take out of the yellow paint for like EPA purposes apparently. And now it just doesn't cover nearly as good as it apparently did back in the day. That's what I've been told. All of our pieces are scuffed and ready to go, including the mirror cap. Now thankfully, 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 I have about two thirds of a gallon mixed up already from when we painted the car, same exact paint, so we know it's gonna match. Provided we get ample coverage this time around. This is the exact reason I'm never painting a car yellow again. I love yellow, don't get me wrong. I love how it turned out, but man oh man, out of all the colors I've painted, dang, that's pretty much a full gallon. Out of all the cars I painted, yellow is the hardest, simply based off just how hard and difficult it covers. Never again. 
Like I said, this is already mixed. It goes one to one. One part of color to one part of reducer. And if you didn't know, there is an unlimited shelf life on the base coat after it's mixed. So after messing a few pieces up and whatnot, I think I finally got enough color, enough base coat on these to where they're gonna match. Now it's very hard to tell until we actually get some clear coat on because the color does change with clear coat, but I think we should be in the clear. So I'm gonna let this base coat completely flash off to where it's not shiny anymore. Go ahead and lay down two coats of clear and we should be good. I did a little bit of research. It's lead that they removed from the paint. So apparently that's why it doesn't cover nearly as good as it used to. While we wait on the space coat to flash, I have another part for the car that we've been waiting on for a while. I think they just came out with this because I've, I've never seen one made specifically for the Evo 8. Now some of you guys might recognize this exact box with this exact tape. It's because I run a lot of these radios. Every car I build gets a glorious eye doing head unit. And the reason for it is because it's a good quality Apple CarPlay unit. Everything needs CarPlay nowadays, at least in my opinion. And uh, eye doing has been treating me well with all the cars that I put a unit in. Now they always include a ton of extra stuff that I don't really ever install. Backup camera stuff, things for like Wi-Fi or a microphone if you wanna talk on the phone while you're driving, things of that nature. And of course, the unit itself, which is built, hmm, built right into the bezel. I don't know if I'm gonna like the gray with all the other carbon fiber stuff that we have on the in interior. And also included is a new set of decals for your climate control. This thing should be plug and play right into the factory radio wiring harness. So there's two different harnesses here. I'm guessing we're just gonna use whichever one plugs into our factory harness on the car, factory chassis harness. Now I did have this generic double thin bezel made out of carbon fiber, but I had this done before I knew I doing made a unit that was built into the bezel. I don't mind the gray. Hmm. I do feel like carbon was a bit excessive, so I might go black. All right, let's see if this thing truly is plug and play. Let's say plugs in there. Quite frankly, do not know where this plugs in. Let's see if we even need it. All right. Well, she turns on right away. Go ahead and do just a quick Apple CarPlay test. Make sure our audio works. All you need is that one plug in, plug it right in, you're good to go. Nothing else is needed. Now I just need to decide whether I want the bezel carbon, which would take a couple months again to get made. A nice flat black or just leave it silver or like the OEM gray. What do you guys think? Drop a comment down in the comment section below. What would you do if this was your build? and you had everything else going on, what would you do? I'm gonna be giving this away. So how this is gonna work is comment in the comment section below where you're from and make sure you leave either your email or your Instagram or some sort of way to get a hold of you. And that's all you have to do. I'll pick a winner here in a couple days and ship this very beautiful carbon fiber bezel out to one of you guys. Let's go ahead and slap down some clear on these door handles. I wanna get them done tonight so they can have overnight to dry and hopefully tomorrow we can get the door locks back from the from the locksmith and get this interior interior finally completely wrapped up. This is the clear of choice with a fast activator from Gentech KAC410. That's what's on the rest of the car, so I figured I'd spray that again. So this is a four to one ratio, four parts of the clear, one part activator. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but I know if that's enough for at least one coat. I can always mix it more later. 
Paint these days is so expensive, I don't care to waste it. Look at that finish, man. I swear, every time I paint parts just on a whim, not in a booth, just, just doing whatever, they turn out perfect. Granted, of course, it's always really, really small pieces like this that aren't done in a booth, but I think that's gonna be, should be perfect. Now there is one more, it's an actual body panel on the car that does need to be repainted, unfortunately. Kind of the same concept as what we just did. The true, the diehards of the build, the big fans of the build are gonna know what panel it is based off of the videos. I haven't said it, so if any of you guys have been paying close attention, you would have seen which panel on this car is miscolored. Well, that was a solid day. Got the Type R building its boost back. Got our panels repainted on the E on the eight. Got a new radio in the eight. Radio works well, which I'll link down below. And got some stuff repainted, which I did not want to do. But when you don't know what you're doing with paint, that's what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll link this radio down below. And I'll see you boys tomorrow.